channel you already know what's up um, I'm doing this video on this is gonna be kind of a review of the first two episodes of the Shane Dawson series about a uh, Jeffree star and so um, I didn't really plan on talking about it but I've I've kind of let both of those first two episodes kind of marinate on me and I just wanted to kind of share my opinions on some parts of this on 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 like some mainly like some the the really big stuff because I can tell you right now the first the first episode was just kind of meh there wasn't really anything interesting about it other than them previewing the fact that the drama was to come in the second episode which it kind of did um so um if you want to hear what I think, then keep on watching. But before we get into it, if, if I can talk today. Before we get into anything, you already know what you got to do. Click that subscribe button. Hit that bell, getting the notifications when I post new videos. And click that like button. Let me know you're liking the stuff that I'm putting out. So, without wasting any more time, let's get into this video. Alright, so, I'm, so like I said in my intro, I watched the first two episodes. I didn't completely finished the first episode because I was just like after a while I just got tired of hearing both of them dote on each other and I was just like okay this is just mad boring but the second one was a lot more interesting because you kind of got to see how um Shane is developing his palette with Jeffrey so we know that collab is coming and so we've seen so they preview um, they preview one of his lip shades that's going to be named after him. So that was, that was kind of cool. Um, just to kind of see, you know, again, like you, if you watch his first series on Jeffrey, you kind of got to see like the massive empire that is Jeffrey Star Cosmetics. But, um, when they actually started talking about percent <laughs> percentages, that's where the video got really interesting because, again, you could tell that they were very hesitant to talk about that stuff because those are like trade makeup, that's like makeup world trade secrets that you really don't want to talk about like that. So, I mean, I guess I can understand his nervousness, but when, I mean, he asked, he said, do you want like complete transparency? And, and obviously Shane was like, yeah, I want complete transparency. So Jeffree Star talks about how um, makeup companies basically determine their pricing, and so in, and so when he was talking about the percentages, I was just like my jaw dropped to the floor. I had no idea the amount of markup that a lot of these companies are charging for these palettes when the actual cost to make a lot of those palettes will blow your mind. I was just sitting there like, what is going on? I was like, it costs, but he's, he was just like, He's like, it costs my company $12 to make my palette because you're paying for the packaging, you're paying for good quality, he's like, you're paying for the quality of the products. He's like, I don't ship my stuff, my stuff is made here in the United States and California, so it's naturally going to cost a little more money to make. He said, but most of these companies who outsource their, their palettes to mainly China, He's like, you're getting your, the quality of ingredients isn't going to be up like that great, but they charge. So like their, the cost to make their palette isn't super expensive, but then the upcharge for those palettes was 
absolutely mind blowing. I was like, huh? Like us, like in some instances, it was a seven hundred percent markup on the price of the palette. So the palette may have cost five dollars to make, but they're going to charge you fifty dollars for the palette. And I was just like, huh? So again, majority of the time you're paying for the name and the packaging. You're not, it, I mean, a small sliver of it goes to the cost of the product. But I was just like, what is going on with these, ma and I, and I, and I had already had like a, I was like, I was like, I think to me the biggest culprit is like your Kylie Cosmetics and your KKWs because everyone knows that they use the same lab as ColourPop. So we all basically know that Kylie Cosmetics and Kim and KKW and KKW Beauty is basically overpriced ColourPop. And so when you're hearing like so like let's let's use this palette. Let's use this palette for example. So this is a strawberry palette from ColourPop. Um, this palette costs I want to say it's twelve dollars. This palette probably from like if you from the feel of the palette like this is plastic. So I know that the ingredient like the cost to make this particular palette. It probably costs maybe two or three bucks to make this palette and they charge 12. That markup isn't that ridiculous. But when you, when it costs uh, the same amount it costs to make this and you are charging like 49 for it. Like, really? Really sis. So it was interesting finding out how companies determine the pricing of their product. So like Jeffree Star's product costs between $12 and $17 to make, but he's charging you like $52. So the markup isn't insane, but you're paying for the quality of the product. You're paying for the carton, you're paying for the packaging, like and it and his packaging is isn't like cheap packaging like it's really it's really nice packaging like to me as a person he's a little questionable but when he he's he basically lets you into his business and you kind of saw how he runs his business and so you kind of also got to see how a makeup company should treat a collab between two people. And so obviously he rehashed up the tea on the Too Faced and Nikki Tutorials palette debacle where basically he talked about how basically she got paid pennies for that palette. And he's like, he's like, they probably made upwards of $10 million off of the sales of those palettes. And she only got $50,000 for that collab. Just a flat fee of $50,000. And she did not get any residuals off of the sales. That blew, like, we kind of knew but he went into depth a little bit more and you're just sitting there like, wow. And so when he was talking with Shane about his percentage for his collab and he told Shane that he was going to be getting seven, I think it was like 70% of his palette sales. 
which in the end, if it sells really well, it will pocket him about $5 million. Shane was shooketh. He had to like leave the room and all that great. So like, you, I'll link the video below for you to watch so you can, both videos below so you can see what I'm talking about. But I will say that this, this particular video was an eye opener for the simple fact of how business should be done and how collaboration should be treated. Now, obviously every company is different, but he used the two-faced situate the two-faced situation with Nikki Tutorials as an example of what not to do. And so, obviously Nikki piped up and said something on I believe it was Twitter and she talked and she talked about um it was either Twitter or Instagram, I can't remember. Where she kind of gave her side of the whole um, Two-Face situation. And you're just sitting there like, like really Two-Face? Y'all are that cheap? That y'all can't pay, that y'all can't drum up a contract to give her some residuals. But on at the same time, Nikki also said, she's like, I've learned my lesson from this and to make sure that, you know, I have a lawyer read the contract so that I don't get gypped like that again. Obviously Nikki Tutorials went on to some great things like she's the ambassador for Marc Jacobs Beauty. She's worked with uh, Maybelline on multiple occasions so it worked out for her in the end but there was moments where even she said that she had to struggle with people not believing her because when they released the palette, the palette that she got was really really good but the palettes that were being sold to customers were really really crummy and so you f like I felt bad for her in that moment because all she's trying to do is you know have a collab and that collab basically went straight to dirt thanks to Too Faced so um some people may not want to watch it, but I kind of re I recommend this per like not the first episode. Like you don't have to watch the first episode, but the second episode was a lot more informational when it comes to the actual behind the scenes stuff. When it comes to like contract negotiations and collab things and such, like you actually saw Shane like trying to pick out his colors for his palette. So I'll be curious to see what that palette ends up looking like. But I mean, overall, I mean, to me, that's to me, the second episode was really, really interesting. And so that's if I'd recommend either one to watch, it would honestly be the second video because the first video you're literally all you're getting is them interacting with each other him flying on a plane for the first time blah 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 there's nothing there was nothing really interesting about the first episode but the second episode had a lot of pertinent information that to me if you plan on starting a makeup line it would behoove you to watch this video and to see what goes into it so you have a true understanding of how the how a makeup brand operates so if you enjoyed this video comment down below let me know what you thought of parts one and two of the uh jeffree star and shane dawson series and if you think that there were some things that you thought were just like why is this even in this series or your thoughts on like hey some of the some of the stuff I I'm not even gonna lie some of the stuff was really interesting in the video so again if you enjoy it comment down below obviously before you leave make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit that bell put it on all so you get all the notifications when I post new videos and until next time guys deuces